very good afternoon and welcome back to Recon Middle East and North Africa 2014. Great to see so many people here for what is the final session of this year's event. And it is a cracking session, as you can see from this wonderful lineup of panelists. It is the retail runway. Let me introduce your moderator for this panel. He's Walter Kleinschmidt, the president of R2E Consultants. The backstory is this. Walter has been working in the Middle East retail industry for 30 years. I was going to say he's had a front row seat in the transition from souks to malls, but that would suggest he's been a spectator. He hasn't. He has been one of the lead actors in the transformation from souks to malls. 2005, he founded R2E Consultants. It provides advisory services to clients across the Middle East and also up in the Levant. Some of his flagship projects, this will bring it to life, the Kingdom Center in Riyadh and also the Taj Mahal in Amman. Now, he is also founding director of the Middle East Council of Shopping Centers. He is an international faculty member of the ICSC School of Professional Development. Particularly, this is what he does, local specific training programs to new entrants in the industry. And the following phrase, I think, sums him up perfectly, anticipating the next Retail real estate trend is part of Walter's DNA. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our moderator for our final panel today, Walter Kleinschmidt. Walter, over to you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, even though we were nominated, the six of us, to try to bring, keep people to this conference to the very last minute. So a real word of appreciation and thanks for those of you that are joining us. I will guarantee you that you will not be uh, disappointed and you'll be happy to have stayed right on till the end. As the last session, we're really kicking off the next 20 years, we might say. The last 20 years we've celebrated at this convention uh, and we've been looking at uh, lots of things to expect in the future. But at the end of the day, as you all know, if you're in the business of shopping centers and retail real estate, it's all about the merchandise or the F&B, or the services, but it's what we deliver to the customers. And this is what we're going to talk about, some of the trends coming up uh, in terms of brands that have established a DNA on a minimum basis, at least in one or two countries, that are ready to go in the region, and most of you here are looking for new ideas, new brands, and new services for your mall. So let's start without any further ado. Our first speaker comes to us from Jordan. I have to say, I was very impressed. I've done a lot of work in Jordan, so I'm really quite uh, fond of the country. And it pleases me to know that of all the applicants we've had for this runway, and I think we went through about 20 of them, probably 10 of them came from Jordan. So it's a real hotbed of enterprise in the, in the business, in the, uh, in the retail business. So any of you looking for ideas, uh, look into Jordan as a country. But today we'll bring one Jordanian to you to talk to you about his concept, Dino Aladin the owner and operations manager for the Café Gourmand. Yeah, no. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, everybody. This is uh, an honor to be here and to present our concept to you. And especially thank you, Selma, for putting Jordan also on the map. The Café Gourmand. <laughs> Le Café Gourmand is actually um, a Parisian trend where you get three mini pastries and a Café Express. But it was the name Gourmand that really inspired us. He who is passionate and loves his food. This is what really grabbed our attention and we decided to name it that. Because we weren't talking about what we were offering. We were talking about the customers that we were looking for. People who love food. And today, they can actually prove it. They take a snapshot of it, they put it on their Facebook, on Instagram, and so on. This is a picture, for example, that was put on our Facebook page. Everybody wants to share how much they love their food now. They will even snap it before they touch it or smell it. But let's back up a little bit. I just wanted to like, talk a little bit about how we decided to like, break into the market, being so small, being surrounded by so many colossal brands everywhere. And everybody knows like these days you go in and there's so many big brands coming from the West and starting up in a mall might be a little intimidating at first. But we decided to look at it a little bit from a smaller perspective. Let's make it a bit more intimate. Let's make it more relaxed for the customer. 
well, what we realized was, you know, synthetic surfaces and cold surfaces were out. Designers, customers, they wanted something more natural. They wanted to go move forward from, you know, the, the kind of clinical feel that most restaurants were starting to have in big places. So we decided to go for a lot more earthy feel, natural plants, wood, wooden floors, even wood on the ceilings, books, things that make you feel at home when you walk in. You know, come in, please have a seat. Would you like to look at a menu? The customer, when they're in a shopping mall, sometimes can feel hectic, and they need to like take a breather and continue on with their day without feeling that they're rushed with their meal. We keep it simple as well. We have to keep uh, reminding ourselves that let's not complicate things for the shopper. Let's not, he wants to come in, he wants to have a meal, and he wants to continue on his way. So why give them such a complicated thing that they have to analyze the menu? Keep it simple, but that way you can actually bring in a lot more when you keep it simple. And as well, we felt that it was time to get uh, a bit of the Middle Eastern comfort food as well. Yes, we do have the Western comfort food, but there was a gap in the market for like true, comfortable Arabian flavors and uh, atmosphere, hospitality. For example, one of my personal favorite is uh, the traditional Arabic breakfast. Um, three boiled eggs with some good quality olive oil, grilled halloumi, lebane, and some fresh bread and a pot of tea. This, for me, is one of the most um, special dishes because of what the customers <coughs> usually say. They're like, you know, you brought me back to the old days when my mom used to make this for me. This, for us, is really special. And it's like, continuously brings back people for more. Even expats and tourists, when they come in, they want the traditional Arabic breakfast. They want to see what that's all about. Chicken tabbouleh. Tabbouleh is one of the most iconic uh, salads that you can get in the Middle East. Put it on top of some grilled chicken breast, and you get yourself a chicken pilard. Again, East meets West. Um, there was a lot of talk recently about traditional versus uh, modern. And um, this way, you know, we're bringing Europe and the Middle East together in like it's a, a nice one. merger together. <laughs> and again, I want to keep going back to the word simple because the ingredients, <coughs> when they're simple, they are easily um, customized. And that way you can grow and you can make much more op uh, options for the customer. Again, also modern. We needed to be uh, true to the vegetarians and people who don't want any animal fat or protein, almond milk, granola, um, fruits, and honey. And also, it's playful for the customer. This way, they, ca they get what they want, but they can do it the way they want. Again, everything is so simple and yet uh, very special when it comes onto their plate. Manaish, one of the simplest dishes ever, flatbread, za'atar, or halloumi, or lebane, whatever you like, you can have it. It's uh, 2014, you want whole wheat? We'll make whole wheat. You want to fold it into calzoni? That's fine. All this is integrated into the menu, and so the customer will choose what they want without it being complicated for them. And one of our uh, stars is our bakery. All these three items might look very different to you, but the truth is they're made in the same oven. You know, like we've got the homemade roast beef with the multigrain uh, bread. We've got the sesame uh, seed bagel, and we've got the almond croissant. All of these made in the same location and done on the same day fresh for the customer. And there's also something very comforting knowing that there's a bakery. Even if you're not a very big bread eater, knowing that there's, there's a bakery inside and everything's made fresh is very comforting for the customer. It always brings them back for more. Ramadan is also a very special occasion. The very holy month of Ramadan in, uh, in the Middle East is important. Everything kind of changes. Even the timetables chi change. Customers come to the mall like at 9 o'clock in the summer times, and they stay till 2, 3 a.m. And we prepare for them something to remind them from home. They're out shopping with their families, and there's something very special about having families come in at 1 a.m. together to have comforting food with their bread. And everything, again, is in small portions to share, and they can customize like they want. After Ramadan, Eid is there. Our pastry uh, is the star. We produce a huge buffet of mini French pastries. 
Um, the families walk in, they make their own cafe gourmands, and the kids, they get their chocolate fountains, which they can dip with the fruits, and the kids, <coughs> those, those are the true gourmands that we have to deal with. If the kids don't approve of you, the parents don't approve of you. And if the parents don't approve of you, you've lost a lot of customers. So um, on Christmas, we uh, bake some gingerbread houses and we get the kids involved and they decorate themselves and the parents are very thankful because you took them away while they have their cup of coffee. The display at the bottom isn't really in our store. It's actually three floors down and on the other side of the mall where we displayed our work that uh, the kids did in the, with the gingerbread houses. And uh, within a month, I'm really happy to announce that we're going to be opening our second store in the boulevard, the new downtown in Amman, an outdoor shopping center, which we're really looking forward to. All of Jordan is waiting for this big moment, and we're really excited about this. In 2015, we rented a, a location, which is in the middle of, uh, in, in front of one of the biggest supermarkets in Jordan, in the new Abdali Mall, opening hopefully in 2015. This is uh, a snapshot of our revenue so far. We've been blessed with 30% increase over two years, being so young and like in a difficult market, but because we kept talking to our customers, we kept understanding what they're looking for, we were able to like always customize according to their uh, moods, or according to their tastes, according to their likes and dislikes, and that's been very, very successful for us. What we're looking for and hoping in the future to uh, venture into the Gulf and expand to like, because there's so much going on around the region and food and beverage especially, it, it will always um, keep changing. It's not, it's a very fast paced uh, industry and it's very exciting. And everywhere you go, you can add more flavors, you can add more ideas, you can merge things together. And that's why we're looking to expand into the Gulf. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Dino. It's a wonderful first uh, start. I didn't realize, or I realized, I'm looking at this, that the original slide with the title is Retail Runway, and the whole objective of the of presentation for those who have not maybe thought of is that these are brands that are experimented, developed, and they're ready to expand. One of them is quite ex already quite the widespread, but these brand, like Cafe Gourmand, is looking to this opportunity to, to excite you with their concept and to hopefully meet with you to expand their footprint in the region. I can vouch for Dino's good judgment. I can say that his first two concept stores were actually done in the two projects that I had the, the uh, privilege of being a consultant to in Jordan. So obviously, it was a, you make good decisions as well. <laughs> So, uh, and what's interesting is we're seeing local concept, we're seeing uh, activities that kind of remind you of what we saw this morning or yesterday. When I saw the Manakesh picture, it reminded me of this, uh, this morning's presentation about the pizza place that offered everything on it, this kind of variety of food preparation. And that's what we're so proud to do, because we've got someone locally that's developed a concept, and that's the first of four. Our next speaker, it comes to us from Qatar, also friends from uh, back 1984 when I uh, came to the region in, uh, in Qatar, the Abu Isa family, and Hikmat Khabulsi, who is a country manager for the holding, is going to talk about a concept which is also very timely when we think of lifestyle, Mosafer International. Hikmat. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Walter, for the brief introduction. I'm very honored and pleased to be among you today and have the opportunity to speak and take you through the uh, beautiful story of Musafir concept. As you all know, Musafir in several languages mean the traveler. I'm going to take you through what we have done to build the concept and present it and position it as a an amazing lifestyle and travel solutions concept. Let me zoom in in the travel industry and uh, how did we do it? 
Well, as Doug mentioned yesterday, we had to differentiate ourselves from the competition, and therefore we had adopted a blue ocean strategy and blue ocean thinking, which not only uh, differentiated us from the competition, but uh, helped us to uh, develop those elements uh, which we have based on rebuilt, redefined the industry and therefore created our own industry, which we call the Musafir industry. We're totally away from the old-fashioned traditional travel industry. To take you through the concept as an airplane, three classes, the uh, tourist, economy class, the business class, the first class, and these three classes talk to different segments of the uh, of clientele, different price positioning, different users. So you all imagine first class is talking to the people who love uh, the world renowned international brands, while business class talk to sophisticated business users as yourselves. Uh, when we talk of tourist and economy, it caters to, uh, let's say, uh, fashionable accessories and affordable luxury items. This gave the Musafir concept an amazing flexibility because depending on the location, depending on the format we would like to have, we can play around with the proportion of, of each of those uh, segments or classes within one store. So if we're opening a, a store in a financial district, we can go like 70% business and the rest is luxury, let's say. Or if we're opening a travel retail uh, space, it could be mostly tourists. By the way, we don't call our team sales staff at Musafir, we call them travel advisors, and most of them enjoy a smile like this gentleman. Talking about blue ocean strategies or thinking, uh, the first essential element comes to mind is on innovation. Our R&D team focused from day one to create specific products that fulfilled that gap between the travel industry and Musafir industry. And we bridged that big gap between design and business strategy. So we designed products that add value, at the same time, sells well. Imagine yourself sitting on the beach with a vest, recharging your devices. Imagine mothers traveling with luggages that could be transformed into strolley. I'm sure a lot of moms here will love to have that product. We can take orders later. This is what I mean by when we say specific products that add value. And many people understood personalization as just adding names on a bag or initials on a bag. Well, at Musafir, we understood it totally differently. What we want is we want clients and consumers to come to our stores, spend the maximum time possible, put their creativity, put their passion, involve their emotions and create their own product. Bring their families, their kids, do their, the, the exercise of creating a special luggage and make it become their travel companion. This is the experience we're looking about. It's not only personalizing products, but really personalizing the shopping experience within our stores. It goes further to even designing the internal parts of, of already world famous brands to cater to those detailed needs and requests of our customers. Going through the retail format, it's simple. We have the standalone stores from 100 to 500 square meters. We're opening soon our first U.S. store in New York in Fifth Avenue, 1,700 square meters location. But in terms of other retail formats, we do have concessions within department stores. We do have the kiosk concepts, two amazing kiosk concepts, as well as travel retail concessions. We understood over the three years of existence uh, and mainly while talking to shopping malls, that the shopping experience is not only about selling beautiful 
and added value of products, but also offering amazing customer service. And this is why we launched a couple of initiatives. One of them is called the Travel Clinique, which is basically uh, representing a spa for your travel companion. Another is the Mosafir Concierge, that whether you're a customer or just passing by our flagship stores, you can come in and request any kind of assistance you would like to have. We launched the full-fledged travel agency, Musafir, for ticketing, hotel bookings, and all travel services. As well as, as Doug again mentioned yesterday, the, the idea of delivery, which we have since start. And finally, you can go to malls and shop, buy your luggage, leave your address, and we will take care of delivering that. There's nothing worse than consumers walking around in malls with luggage. So this is the services we have already launched. I'm not going to take too much time on the e-commerce, but we're fully uh, working on, on an integrated omni-channel omni uh, platform, which should be ready by 2015 to have the customer shopping experience again offline as well as online. Today, we are in uh, the following countries, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Jordan, and Qatar, but definitely looking forward to take Musafir globally. And again, uh, the, the countries we mentioned below are, are now on track for, for leasing opportunities. Uh, would love to hear from all malls uh, in order to make that happen. But the expansion plan is pretty aggressive. Of course, the secret of all what we managed to do within those three or three and a half years is basically uh, based on, on neuro retail and neuro marketing. And I'm very, very proud to say that Musafir is one of the uh, very limited, if not the sole companies that has neuroscientists team on board to collect data, analyze it, transmit it, and build all the USPs and shopping experience on that. As we all say, this is only the beginning. Thank you very, very much. <clears throat> I just have, just have a small message before I, uh, you know, Abuisa Holding, we finalized constantly amazing concepts, whether homegrown and franchise as well. And we recently finalized four or five concepts among 16 handles, Froyo and Smoothies, Bugatti, Yves Rocher, Amour, and Durance. Uh, please feel free to ask me for USBs with presentations of all these concepts. We need your help to get secure or secure beautiful locations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I guess Hikmat noticed he had 12, eight, 18 seconds left and he wasn't going to give him up. So congratulations, <laughs> you're true salesman. Our next uh, concept is going to be introduced by Kurshid Vakil. He's been, uh, I think, Reasonably visible, but obviously he needs more visibility and he wants to expand the footprint of his franchise. He's the co-founder and the executive director for Marina Home Interiors Retail Network. Uh, uh, someone who's been in the industry for a long time. He's one of those very welcome new entrants because there's not too many furniture and home accessory businesses that have learned to live in a shopping center, i.e. pay the rent we would like to see. So it's a great pleasure to, to introduce him to listen to him and to see how he makes, uh, brings his concept to life in a way that customers appreciate it and shopping centers enjoy it. Thank you, Walter. <laughs> retail, retail, and more retail. Location, location, location. Shopping, shopping, and more shopping. I think this is our wish list all the time. I, I'm sure you'll agree. But these are not necessarily the ingredients for success, especially in the hardcore retail environment we are in. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. My name is Kurshid Wakil, co-founder of your very own Marina Home Interiors. We have witnessed significant success year on year, and the brand has moved from strength to strength year on year. We've reached a stage 
where the brand is ready for a franchise rollout plan. In fact, the rollout is already in place in many markets. Many have been signed, scouting locations going on, and in some cases, a fit-out program in process as well. But I'm here today to partly entice you as a shopper through a small presentation, but from a broader perspective, take you through what we have done in the past, why we believe the brand is ready for a wider, more comprehensive presence in many markets. Um, from humble beginnings, way back in 97, 1997, with a 750 square feet store to current for average format of 25,000 square feet up to 55,000 square feet. The brand has seen tremendous success, which we believe it is, is a result of the learnings from our customers. I think customers kept us on our toes on one hand and the competition on the other. Um, I think the constant evolution of product mix together with a certain flair of mixing modern with eclectic, avant-garde, cosmopolitan, and a number of styles uniquely presented put us in a slightly different platform where the brand became a bit edgy, a bit quirky, but yet very different. Brands, product, products are sourced from a number of countries from east to west, from South America, the countries like Brazil, from Mexico to mainland Europe, mainly Italy, Germany, Belgium, huh? to a num number of countries in the Far East. The sourcing has become the backbone of what we do. Yeah. I'm going to take you through a journey, a visual journey, and some details to get you a little insight into what we are all about. We believe that our stores have a certain adventure of the way they look, have a certain level of free spiritedness of the sights and the smells and the touch and the feel, certain extraordinary elements which are visibly present that are unique, presenting a certain intrigue and enticing you as an explorer, a shopper, to a journey where you yourself define your individuality, your taste, your lifestyle, and how it reflects at your home. Often, it is a journey of discovery. It is not just the hard goods, the larger elements that contribute to our business, more so the accessories and all the little giftware that is bought on impulse contributes to around 35% 35, 35 of our total business volume. Marina stores can be visibly seen in many of the region's um, main markets, including our journey in India, fall 2012, in Egypt early this year, 
will follow in Pakistan in the coming month, month and a half, and many other countries that will be announced shortly. Our standard format, which we offer for the franchise rollout is anything between 2,000 and 2,500 square meters. For the eclectic feel, the high ceilings, the wider frontage, the depths, the widths, all contribute to a true experience. The beauty of this franchise rollout is relatively high return on, on investment per square foot. From an average of US $300 per square foot per month to even in some cases US $700 is what we can offer. So from an investment point of view, it's a win-win. Besides the high emphasis on quality, design, training programs, software integration, and all the marketing intelligence that we would offer to the prospective franchisees. Here are a few examples of how the stores look and how we wish to take it forward in, in the markets of interest. <laughs> the new concept stores are, in a short description, from a design point of view, a, a combination of the New York loft style and modern industrial warehouse look. Each section is designed in such a way that in, it entices you a little more, it keeps you in the stores a little longer, it brings you back for repeat purchases, keeps the journey going on. All the visuals that you've seen are actually real shots of our concept stores here in the UAE, which will be rolled out in other markets too. We help our partners in, in the complete rollout plan from, from the launch and all that it takes to do a, to do a proper launch the activities involved, the press involved, sponsorships that are part of a marketing plan. Visually presented to you through some slides, giving you an insight into um, our involvement in certain CRS, CSR and CRM programs. and how these programs have been recognized by various authorities, various bodies. In short, what we believe is the, the brand is very urban, and that's what is required in, in today's globalization. It is exotic, meets your personal taste, it's credible, through the success we have witnessed year on year. It is inspirational from all the changes that we have continuously made and will continuously make in future to present you a discovery or a true shopping experience like no other. We believe that Marina is the first brand and the only brand in the marketplace that truly presents a fusion of styles, a fusion of colors, touch, taste, feel in the true sense.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. If there are any questions later on, I'll be happy to, to answer them. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks, Richard. Okay, our first three presenters were presenting brands which basically they created, they manage, and they, uh, and, and they protect the brand equity, let's call it that. They are self-sufficient locally. Our next presenter is, we're introducing really two things from a practical point of view for those of you in the audience. We're gonna present the manager and therefore the brand holder in the region with who you are dealing with primarily, and then the original brand which comes to us from Germany uh, in a traditional franchise relationship, which has been the mainstay of the business here for, for many, many years. So I'm gonna allow the local brand manager, uh, Jasmine Kessler, uh, she's a senior brand manager for B&T Brands uh, to, pre to introduce to you our uh, Simon Herman, who will be talking about Leros, uh, the brand, uh, uh, the last brand on our runway this afternoon. Oops. <laughs> our first technical hitch of the week. <laughs> yeah, hello. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I think so. That's better. Okay. Um, it's a pleasure being here today. And um, in the name of the entire team of B&T Brands and Trades Middle East, I would like to thank you for getting the opportunity to represent, first of all, our company, and then as well, um, some of the brands we are taking care of. But for today, um, I make it very short because um, it's not only me who would like to tell you something about us and our brands, but also the fantastic German um, fashion brand Leros, who came all the way from Germany in order to tell you something a little bit, um, something a little bit about the brand. Yeah, as for us, brands and trades is based in GLT in Dubai with our head office. And our affiliate company, Brands and Tapes in Germany, is based in Munich. And what we do basically is um, always connecting local partners and store investors and German or European fashion brands in the MENA region. Yeah, by doing that, we are always offering and guarantee a high quality service to both not only the clients, but also um, our local partners within the MENA region. Yeah, our co-partners actually always fall back on our knowledge and experience um, um, towards, towards um, the expansion plan. We are always working out for them in order, um, according to the store performance, Sorry, store performance and oops, according to um, uh, the brand principles and arranging the logistic procedure as well. In order to get you a brief overview, I will show you some brands we're taking care of. For instance, Tom Taylor, I'm very proud of. Just recently we opened another store in Ibn Battuta Mall with, in collaboration with our partner uh, Hacha Group. Then there is, for instance, Bugatti. We also opened just a store in Saudi Arabia with our partner, Abu Issa Group. And not, um, not a long time ago, we just signed up a new brand we are very proud of. It's an Italian fashion brand called Fonarina. This brand is now available in the MENA region for potential partners to approach. And last but not least, our own store concept called Oasis of Soul. Um, we are definitely expanding as well in the near future. Yeah, that's it from my, from my side. And now I'm happy to introduce you to Ms. Simone Hermann, Head of National and International Sales, um, who would like to tell you something about the brand Leros. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, a very warm welcome from my side. Um, 
I cordially welcome you to join our Leras presentation here on the Recon in Dubai. Last but not least, or keep the best for last, this is our motto because I believe I will be the last speaker in this round. If you spare me some time, I would like to take you onto a journey to find out more about the Leros brand, uh, Leros, the uh, emerging lifestyle brand is heading to the Middle East. Are you ready to face a new challenge? Every day is a good day for Leros. The Leros way of fashion is uh, interpreting casual wear as a desirable everyday wear. Some words about the company. Leros is a German company that was founded in 1979. Our annual turnover last year was uh, in euros round about 90 million. We are operating 20 showrooms from uh, the mid of Europe stretching over to Russia. Uh, currently, as we speak, we have got 1,500 shop-in shop, which are operated by our partners and just under 60 monobrand stores. Uh, our distribution is currently active in 30 countries. What is our idea? <coughs> Fashion for every moment of your life in business and in free time, during the whole day and on the night out. For Leros men and Leros women, 12 collections per year, fresh merchandise on the sales floor every month throughout the year. Modern and affordable fashion <coughs> since 1979. Who are we catering for? It is practically the largest target group you can think of. It is the mainstream market. Leros gives mainstream a lifestyle character. Who are our consumers? Fans, brand lovers, friends and followers. What does all them unite? They are people who love quality fashion, and as much as they love quality fashion, they like to spend money on it. The Leros man, who is he? What are his expectations? He is sure not a fashion victim. He is a fashion follower. He wants a understandable and easy fashion, uh, but with an international signature. His age is 30 to 50, and uh, he loves a, let's say, modern way of life and casual looks. In a casual way of smartness, in unlimited combination. And sure, he is looking for the best value for money. For this guy, on top of the uh, complete look of the casual collection, we have designed something special, the high-end in shirts, the Leros Premium line, designed for the new man by Leros. What is this shirt all about? It is all about details, it's all about workmanship, love to details with trims and buttons, something which gives it a special look. It is designed to be a fashionable business shirt and is for office and after work hours. We show four diversified collections per year with exquisite modern details and 100% premium quality, all that on first sight. And the Leros woman? What is she about? She knows the fashion and she is selecting her own style. Um, she's valuing fabrics, but she's looking for that little detail that makes every item something special. 
She's aged 30 to 50 and is not interested in young fashion, but she is looking to find a brand she can wear that makes her look younger. She is sporty and feminine, but she wants uh, the clothes to be comfortable on her body and underline her personality. Fashion is a global desire. Leros is to designed to make people look good worldwide. The world of Leros is growing. Currently, 1,500 1, shop in shop where the brand is traded and just under 60 mono brand stores all around Europe and Eastern Europe and Russia too. And where are you heading on next, you may ask. Sure, the target countries of our wish are uh, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Lebanon. In our expansion plan, the, in the first year we would like to open five to ten monobrand stores, and in the following year, each year, something round about five. This is also depending on the availability of the right locations, and sure also on the partner. What types of locations do we prefer? For the mono brand stores, we are looking at A1 locations with a size of 130 to 150 square meters um, with a minimum shop front of 8 meters. Opening new worlds, Laos speaks your language. And this is what it looks like. The best address for shoppers and retailers is the Leros Concept Store. Come in and find out yourself. This is how it looks. Um, on the left hand side, the ladies wear, on the right hand side, the men's wear, nicely structured with a nice um, stylish feel. Going, back, uh, going further into the store, you would find on the head side, a concept wall with matching furniture uh, in front of it. On the right hand side, the men's changing room. On the left, the ladies, each with a recreation area next to it. The men's wear side on the right with the Leros premium line shirt integrated nicely. And on the left hand side, the ladies wear department with a cash desk also nicely integrated. All what you need to do now is imagine this can be your store. <laughs> be among the very first to launch this proven international lifestyle concept with a fresh and unique handwriting. We meet the challenge. We want you aboard. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Simon. So there you have it. And uh, this year's uh, uh, retail runway, something which is, has been and will continue to be, I'm sure, a uh, mainstay of our conference each year because that's a very fundamental part of our DNA, what we're all about, bringing brands to the market. We've had four brands which represent answered a lot of the questions and all of the uh, priorities we discussed the last two days, lifestyle awareness, importance of food and beverage, the creation of experience, the integration of experience with local concepts and ideas, and creating international experience from local concepts and bringing international experience to the local market. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, we depended primarily upon bringing franchises into this region to give our co consumers the retail uh, choices that they wanted for. Now we're creating more and more brands in the region. I'm particularly happy to see Leros here 
as an international brand joining us because there's so many brands still knocking on the doors. But I'm, I have to say doubly happy to see such a great representation of locally created concepts which are themselves going around the world and expanding. So it speaks well of the maturity of our retailers, of a retail real estate industry, and what has been achieved collectively by everybody in this room and all our friends fellowship to really bring this industry to an incredible level in the last 20 years. What's even more exciting is knowing how many people, how many retailers, how many centers are being built. It's just the beginning. And old guys like me that just can't give it up, next year's going to promise to be so much more exciting. There's so much more coming. And we'll hopefully see you all next year and um, be able to expand on this experience. Because for the next years, we'll see more international brands and more and more brands which will be created here as part of our concept. It's part of the international standards that we brought to this market to which ICSC and MESCSC are committed to help us working together to achieve. So I'm really happy to be here. I'm also like to say that after 20 years of being involved in this conference, it's probably the first time I see Ishwar is gonna look at me and laugh that I actually finished ahead of schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all yours, Richard. Well, sir, many, many thanks indeed. Thanks, of course, to our panelists as well for your presentations. Do please take a seat. I'm sure there will be many people waiting to take your business cards when you step off the stage. And that, of course, is the whole point of it. Listen, that's it. Okay, it's been three fantastic days. I know the networking will continue, a huge part of why everybody is here. Walter asked a really interesting question to me before we came on stage earlier on. What about the presentations, Walter asked. Can we get hold of a copy of the presentations? I put that question to David McAdam, and the answer was, David? Yes. yes, we can, in the style of Barack Obama. They'll be on mecsc.org by, we think, Thursday or so. But uh, soon enough, most of the presentations will be there. That only leaves me to offer uh, my thanks to David McAdam and the team at MECSC for putting this together. What a wonderful three days it's been. And of course, people like Michael Kirchival and the guys from ICSC who've joined us from the United States. It's been wonderful to see you here. So thank you for your presence and your enthusiasm over the past few days. To all the sponsors, too numerous to mention again right now, but you know who you are. Thank you indeed for your contributions. The most important contribution of all though is from the speakers, people who've given their time, who've shared their insights, who've made presentations, and everybody, the five or 600 delegates who've paid their money to be here today, and given not just their money and their presence, but their energy and their enthusiasm. I will tell you this, being an MC for a conference or a host for an award ceremony can be a desperately lonely job if you've got an audience that just sits there and goes like this. Any questions, please? Um, really, really hard work. And when there's an award ceremony, congratulations, and you get. Well, we didn't have any of that. We had energy, we had enthusiasm, we had vibrancy. We had people who were really, really interested to learn more about this industry. So thank you to all of you for your contributions. Bring that energy back to your shopping malls across the Middle East and North Africa, and then bring it back here or wherever it is we meet this time next year in 2015. From myself, thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your time here in Dubai. Thanks, David. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard, very much. You know, you've made my time here such a joyful time this year. It's been great to have you, such a professional uh, person to lead the whole thing along. Thank you. Um, the next year's conference is slated to be in this venue on November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 2015. So mark it in your calendars. We look forward to hosting it again. And if we're lucky enough, we'll have Richard to come and join us again as well. Anyway, that's it for all, and thanks to everyone for such a great conference. We really, truly appreciate it. Thank you.